Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Scorpions here at New York's Classic Rock, Q1043. Matthias, good morning. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, Mickey, welcome for the first time. Thank you. I think I've been out here with Motorhead. But yeah, Probably. but you years and years ago. Yeah, but but first time as with, uh, with yeah. your new job, and I Absolutely. wanted to congratulate you on thank your you. new job. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you've been behind uh, the drums for uh, Scorpions now for how long? A year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah, so that's roughly. still that counts as a new job. That's a new kid. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. When when you join a band <laughs> that has a fifty year history, what's the learning curve for you? Well, you know, it's not easy to uh, step into a, a band that's been running so long. You know, they have their ways, and and I also been playing. You know, thirty five years internationally myself. Oh, sure. So. You've been you've been with some big bands. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's. No matter what, but especially, you know, they have their ways and, and they have, uh, but it clicked right away, really. You know, you, you can kind of feel that uh, it takes 30 seconds and, and a small tour. Well, Matthias, how do you find somebody new when you have a job opening in an established band? Like Scorpions, I mean, you don't just put a, a one ad in the newspaper. I mean, you have to get the word out and... And do you have people in mind right from the beginning? Actually, <clears throat> in this case, I did. Um, <clears throat> due to the sad circumstances that Lemmy died, mm. <clears throat> we didn't have to think very far. I uh, mentioned it to our tour manager, Bill, and said, could you give Mickey D a call? And I didn't want to call myself. You know, He would have been maybe too shy on the phone to answer. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, and uh, so I said, you know, let's see what he's up to. And uh, luckily, he had the time to come over. And we rehearsed while the tour was going on in the afternoon yeah. secretly. Hmm. And then at some point, we had to make the decision to change drummers. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was actually called in to be uh, uh, like a standby. James had some health problems and... Uh, and uh, yeah, and and he he needed some time off actually. And, uh, well, you know, when when Brian Johnson was called in to audition for ACDC, they wouldn't tell him what he was auditioning for. They wouldn't even tell him. Um, they called him. They called him at the uh, shop he was working at, installing car <clears throat> windows and repairing car windows, and asked him to come to London to audition as a vocalist for a band. And he said, "What band?" And they wouldn't tell him. <laughs> I mean, to, well, there are secrets to make and there sure are secrets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, it reminds me a little bit of when I joined in 1978. I was called in for a jam session. Huh. And for some reason, I had the uh, sense, uh, I better, like, you know, listen to some of their songs. Mm -hmm. So when we jammed, they, they played Scorpion songs only. And luckily, I knew how they were going. And uh, that was the trick. Well, you know, you uh, the band has had such international acclaim for so long. I mean, famous all over the world. And uh, <clears throat> I, I learned as recently as this morning that there was a, a special love for the band uh, that people who lived behind what at the time was the Iron Curtain felt. This morning when I was coming into work, the car service driver who picked me up this morning uh, is from Poland. Mm -hmm. And so he was telling me about when he came to the United States and so on and so forth. He's a very friendly guy, um, very thick Polish accent. Uh, and, and uh, you know, he asked me what I did, and I told mm -hmm. him, you know, where I worked and everything. And I said, I said, oh, and we've got uh, scorpions coming in this morning. And he went, what? <laughs> he goes, they were our favorite hard rock band. He used the term hard rock. Yeah, of course. Hard rock, and he just—I mean—he he went wild at at the thought. Yeah, uh, we are very very famous in Poland and many other countries in the Eastern Europe European area too. But uh, our bass player is from Poland. He used to live eleven years in New York, and uh, what do what do you say about his accent? He's uh, he's okay actually. Yeah, I'm, he's I'm doing surprised. Well. It's yeah. it's more his ways. He's very Polish. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I was I was talking with Shelley the other day. Wind of change with its hopeful lyrics. I mean, it really uh, it harkens so us back to you know 1989, 1990, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the way the world was changing for the better. And now it seems as if we're back to the old loggerheads again. 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, obviously things keep changing in the world. And uh, at the moment we have the feeling not exactly for the better, the way we we consider better. Better was when everything seemed to be united and peaceful. And I mean, it's a song of hope and we never give up hope. But currently, uh, yeah, there are more. Well, like, you know, I mean, it was it was conflicts it, than it, ever. It, you know, it was it, at least the conflict had some sort of. Uh, simplicity to it that made it easy to understand. You had yeah. the communist world yes. and you had what we called the free world and uh, the result was the Cold War and that ended. Now there isn't a communist bloc but Russia and the United States are at each other's throats again. It's more invisible. You know, it's in kind of... It's You're just, absolutely right. It was easy to understand Black and white. Yeah, this is. This and is, now it's all very colorful. Or, and it's or always changing. Fifty yeah. shades of gray. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, yeah. Yes. But it seems like today um, uh, the really bad stuff you can't really touch. It. It's invisible somehow. It's sneaking yeah. up on you. Yeah. You know, you mm. don't know. Yeah, uh, I mean, you don't know this terror, whole Syria thing. So many Nobody shapes gets. and forms. I mean, right. we get yeah. all the refugees into Europe. And, y you know, you wonder why. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody understands. The, the, like fighter jets flying through the air. Who's against whom? Yeah, I have yeah. no idea. Meanwhile, well, yeah. And meanwhile, that particular song continues to inspire people uh, all over the world when they hear it. It's, it's such a beautiful sentiment. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to write another one. Maybe it is. To get a... I actually have a pretty cool picture I got to show you when we played Poland, when we did Window Change. Remember? Uh, yes. This summer. Where in Poland? We did, uh, we played in uh, Auschwitz. I was just there. Oh, really? really? I was just there. Oh, that's yes. outside of Krakow. That's where our right. bass player is Oh, from. here we go. Yeah. So the whole audience. Is you are aware that we're on radio, yeah? He's mm. showing us yeah, pictures. Yeah, no, I'm showing you guys there. <laughs> that's okay. We had so for all you that's okay. That's okay. We wasn't had, talking. Yeah, we had, a a, we had a clown who was mute who yeah. joined okay. us as a guest the other so, day. Mute was his bad, middle name. Well, you okay. have a toothless right. whistler and a one one arm juggler. <laughs> you, no, I was going to show you guys. And you listeners, look at this. Now about the crowd uh, holding up a red and white... Uh, Remember? Yeah, that's the Red and white sign. Yes. I can yeah, explain yeah. What, what I'm... The whole crowd, as soon as you start playing... I didn't know about that. Uh, the biggest crowd we ever played to was also in that area. Huh. Same promoters uh, back in, I don't know, like early 2000s. 800,000 people. Wow. Festival in Poland, believe. In and, and then what about South America? Also very big. Uh, Brazil is like fantastic. Mexico is doing extremely well for us. Brazil puts you on a postage stamp. Yes, Seriously? That's right. Yeah, I almost forgot a about it. Stamp. Yeah, we have our own postage stamp. We have like, I don't know, at least 50 beer brands, Scorpion huh. beer brands from all over the world. They especially make this when we are coming to town, I guess. But it, it always amazes me when I see the photographs of the gigantic crowds at rock concerts in South America. And uh, I mean, it, it, they're just massive, massive, massive crowds. You know, it's like a Woodstock every weekend. I mean, it's just crazy how Rock many people Rio show up. Rock and Rio started that. Say, yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's huge. And, and the, the audience is very young, too. Mm -hmm. You know, very young people, which is great for us. And, of course, you're at Madison Square Garden uh, this weekend on uh, Saturday. Madison Square Garden refers to itself as the world's greatest arena. Uh, how do you feel when you play there? What's the feeling you get? Uh, it's uh, it's obviously the most known arena in the world. Um, we played there a few times in the 80s, I think three times in a row in 84. We played the 82, late 80s, early 90s, but then we haven't played it in a long time. So it's great for us to come back to play the Garden on Saturday, being sandwiched by Paul McCartney. He plays Friday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something for the production people. He's probably <laughs> very know? happy, you know. <laughs> to load in, load out. Yeah, great. Did you were you were you able since since you're going to be headlining the garden? I would imagine you have some poll. Were you able to score some McCartney tickets while you're yeah, in town? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Friday night we shall pay him a visit. Very nice. Okay, because we saw the show on Monday night. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at Prudential Center, yeah. and yeah, it's right, yeah. it, it's just outstanding. It really yeah. was. I've seen yeah. them a couple of years ago. Whenever they play the old uh, Beatles tunes, 
then this uh, this hysteria in the venue comes up. You know, everybody. He mentioned that on the stage. He mentioned that on the stage. He said, "We know what songs you want to hear, and we know what songs you don't care about." He said, "It's very very simple. You know, we do some of the old Beatles songs, and the whole place goes wild, and we can see that. (laughs) And then we do some of the new songs, and it's like a black hole." Yeah, that's what he said. Give people a break <laughs> right yeah. from the stage. <laughs> Play some new stuff, and and you uh, mm. are supported uh, with Megadeth. Yes, yeah, great band. Yeah, good. We played with them a few times in Europe, and now it's the first time that we actually go together on the road in the states. And they're referred to it. It always mm. labels <clears throat> always crack me up. Your hard rock. They're thrash metal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. And why not? I, I ask Eddie Trunk all the time to define these things for me. You know, I mean, because there's also speed skate metal. You know, I mean, there's all sorts of, I'm which is different, you, which is different from thrash speed yeah. skate metal. Well, there's I so mean, many. It's, it's a little bit like, uh, yeah, the, 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 thousand variations of coffee which you can get at some of these coffee chains Mm -hmm. um you know how i would refer to complicated for me you know how i would refer to you guys great rock bands yeah it's there you go or good music and bad music no but what what i we used to say with motorhead and and that goes so well with scorpions too it's scorpion music after 52 years you deserve your own category if you're into labels of course we we played motorhead music we you know it was Thrash punk, uh, hard rock, uh, speed metal, spunk metal, whatever. See, yes. thrash punk and spunk <laughs> yeah, metal. You, you see? can do anything. <laughs> you see, clown <laughs> metal. You, you know see, what I mean? well, there, there's yeah, clown that, metal. Well, that's insane clown posse. <laughs> oh, the no, latest I trend. But I mean, if there's only one group, how could there be clown metal? Well, some okay. people would argue that Kiss might fall into that category. Oh uh, well. But it's hard to say. Matthias and Mickey with us here at Q1043 I Scorpions. Want- I want Matthias to tell you, Jim, how he stopped smoking, because this is the most amazing story I have ever heard about stopping <clears throat> smoking, and I'm going to drag you to Germany to do this. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I am from uh, Hanover, Germany. I still live there, like close by, and uh, the drive up to this tiny little village in northwest Germany, close to the Dutch border, that was the most painful part. Once I got there... This guy, you know, he's very renowned for being like successful, helping people to stop smoking. Like his rate is like 97%. Some just don't want to do it. So he, even he can't help. So I'm there. He's talking to me. And then like five minutes later, I'm in his office. I sit, uh, you know, across from him at his desk. And then he comes behind me. I could only see his hands above my head. And then somehow like going down the shoulders and arms. And then he said, that's it. 30 seconds, you said. 30 seconds, 30 bucks. And drink lots of water. And drink lots of water. And you so haven't I drove smoked home since. And I haven't smoked since, no. Uh, I remember we have like cigarette machines. Wait, I don't wait, know wait, wait. How, how, how many years has this been? That <laughs> and it's been um, 5th of January uh, 2005. All right. And how many exactly. and how many packs did you smoke a day? I smoked like two packs. On a long night, it could have been two and a half to three, you know, especially when right. being in the studio. You know, there was always a cigarette. Like, right. you know, I didn't really smoke so it. So he but felt it your was head and your like, shoulders? And no, he didn't touch. The, he was just he his hands didn't touch. Oh, he didn't actually the touch? No. He, no, he did something with his energy. And I think he loosened up the poison in my uh, cells and system. And uh, with all the water I had to drink, this all came out and then flushed it out. And then... I have never smoked again. I've never. Now, this is a sane person but telling I've, you I've this. I've never heard anything <laughs> like this. Yeah, I, either have and, I. I. I'm telling you, it's a long way for you guys to go there, even for me, like driving up there. But, Do you have uh, his name after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's, We're it's, going. it's his daughter doing it now. And not only that, I was telling. I don't know Jim. if he's still alive. He might have uh-huh. smoked too much, but anyway, <laughs> uh, he is. Uh, he was like in the uh, late 70s, 80s, like 12, 13 years ago. So. He's not practicing anymore, but uh, his daughter has a same... Is he still alive? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to in lung cancer. Uh, I'm going to have to ask Dr. Oz about this. I can give you the information. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't... You can look at his website and that's it's it. It's amazing. Yeah, so it's worth the trip. And Germany is gorgeous. When I came back, I was in six countries and 
Germany is one of the most beautiful countries I have ever seen in my life. We took a cruise on the Danube, Mm -hmm. which is green, not blue. I don't know where they get the blue from. But, I mean, it's the cleanest river. But Germany is just gorgeous with the greenery and the flowers. And I loved it there. Yeah. Where else did you go? Uh, I went to um, Austria, uh, the Czech Republic, Poland, Poland. I didn't. Uh, um, I'm so. Nikki's asking because he's from Sweden. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't go to Sweden. Up north. No, next yeah. trip. Oh, yeah. uh, my fr- my friend uh, Ronnie says the Czech Republic is the most friendly place on earth. They were all friendly. Well, really? he said he went to Prague. He'd never been there before, and uh, he was only there for a few days. And he went back again about eight or nine months later. Uh-huh. And every bar he walked into, the bartender remembered his name and put his drink down on the bar. Oh, really? Huh. Wow. Well, some of the best food I've of had. Of course, and- Ronnie. Of course, Ronnie tips well. Oh, okay. And he yeah. obviously right. didn't get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> and the best bread I ever had was in the Czech Republic. Really? Yes. It has nuts in it and sprouts. I mean, it was amazing. And after mm. one piece or a half piece, you're full. Well, Mickey, you live in a monarchy. Have you ever met the king? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. Is the king and- a fan? Yeah, he's a great guy, actually. He's, uh, he's a rock and roller. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering because really you look at the, you look at the age group and it all fits. No, no, but... he really is, and and his best friend actually passed away. Noppe uh, passed away uh, very recently, and he was a total rock and roller. And and then I do a lot of charity stuff with the uh, with the princess uh, for uh, handicapped kids and stuff. Mm. And, mm-hmm. uh, the Queen Sylvia's uh, Foundation and all that. So she's yeah. from Bavaria. She's yeah, Brazilian yeah. lady. From beginning, really? Yeah, she's born in Brazil. Yeah, I thought but, she was but, German. No, it was, she's part German. Oh. But she's and, born in. And but actually, yeah, you're Swedish. So are you Lutheran? Sorry, are you Lutheran? Lutheran. Lutheran. <laughs> Why are you asking that? Because the Swedes are Lutherans. <laughs> they are. Is this something new? <laughs> the Swedish <laughs> royal family has to marry Lutherans. Oh. <laughs> No, no, not, not necessarily. <laughs> no, but he, he, it's it's a good family. It's it's not as stiff as the the British uh, royals, you know. Mm-hmm. These guys, uh, our king, he's a he's a rock and roller. He drives uh, sports cars and and hangs out. He's, a, nice he's a fun guy. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah, I was curious about that because you know, uh, I mean, monarchs aside, uh, leaders of nations grew up on uh, rock and roll. And uh, and and they probably have their favorite bands and their favorite songs, just like everybody else. The uh, fact that they lead nations just means they have a different kind of job. But but I was curious because yeah, but r- uh, rock and roll is is good for everyone. You know what I mean? It's it's the the best thing you can get into. Absolutely. And uh, next, I mean, there's the tour that's going on right now, Madison Square Garden Saturday, but. Uh, <clears throat> Any other plans for you guys? Yeah, we kick off the tour in Reading, Pennsylvania on uh, Thursday. We go there tomorrow. A uh, little production rehearsal. It's the beginning of the tour. Then the garden, then up to Canada, Montreal, and Toronto. And then we come back to Chicago and go Salt Lake, Seattle, and then down San Francisco, LA, Denver. Phoenix, and yeah, Denver's in between. And then... Then we uh, end up in Florida, and we hope it has dried out a little bit. Mm. All right. Well, it's and always. And by the way, Reading is mushroom capital. Ah, they're known magic for, mushroom. They're known for mush, not magic mushrooms. <laughs> Just mushrooms. <laughs> Just mushrooms. Just regular old <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to go to that guy again. <laughs> that guy, yeah. <laughs> and Mickey, thank you so much for joining thank us this you. morning here thank at Q one zero four three. And uh, everybody, remember. Uh, Saturday, Madison Square Garden, the meat and the Paul McCartney sandwich yes. will be Scorpions right. and Megadeth. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. New York's classic rock, Q1043.